Hey, love. Hey. How are you? Good. Thank you for getting this together. I know it was kind of last minute, but I was thinking, oh, it probably needs to be needed after I get so many calls. I'm just, I'm watching to let everyone in. I am recording with the idea of being able to share this meeting with those who can't be here. So last minute, um, is everyone comfortable with that? Okay. If at any point you stop being comfortable with that, if you say something, I'm happy to turn off the recording. Um, if we need to talk outside of that space as well. So I'm going to do just a couple, oh my gosh, there's lots of people coming. Just a couple announcements for those that we are recording for. This is um, a combination meeting of the North Carolina Breastfeeding Coalition. I am here using my Breastfeeding Communities link as well. You can see we have people streaming in. This is a very last minute meeting scheduled at the request of uh, Brandy and Angie and community advocates from across North Carolina to see if there's anything we can do to help um, given the flooding crisis in the Western part of the state. So I have no agenda. <laughs> so I'm just going to open the floor. Um, if Brandy, I'm wondering if you might like to start and tell us what's going on, what you need, if you have the ability to process anything. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Um, if you hear a screaming toddler in the background, it's that he just decided to pick the perfect time. Um, but he's been good the rest of the day. So, um, yeah, so I'm Brandy. I'm a private practice lactation consultant. Um, my office is based in Silva, which is Jackson County. Um, I have previous hospital experience. I've worked with Chris as our breastfeeding coach at Harris. I'm also a regional lactation consultant with Mayheck, which is in Asheville and is in Biltmore, the Biltmore area right now. So those locations are closed until further notice. Um, and, you know, as, as a person who is not amongst the explicit devastation that exists further east from me, um, I am nonetheless getting contacted relentlessly from the community members who are without water, without food, without power, running out of formula, giving their babies cow's milk because they don't have any formula, losing their breast milk, boiling water to be able to use it safely, but not having the power to do so, not being able to go get anything you need because what gas you have is what gas you have. Um, there are other people in this area, more in the Asheville and East area who I would love to hear from today as well. But, you know, I've made a trip to the store today to try to find uh, a mother some formula, and I luckily was able to help her connect with that. Um, I am the Jackson County Wake Med Mother's Milk Bank Depot drop-off site, so I've opened up my freezer to any community members who need to store breast milk that they may otherwise be losing due to lack of power. Um, I have had a lot of requests to help people find milk, and I have... Uh, thus far only been able to resort to a um, informal milk sharing uh, Facebook page that we have here in Western North Carolina, but um, I can see the need growing into actually stepping into like a, as much as I hate to to dive into that, like the need is there for, for brokering breast milk and for being a distribution site informally in some um, communities here. We know there are still families that are trapped. We know that there are women, um, imminent into going into labor in areas where they cannot get care. Um, and I am overwhelmed with what to do because with infant and young child feeding and emergencies training, we are taught to focus our support on the larger relief organizations and to let them do their jobs. Um, that is very hard because they're not being able to reach everyone and the, when people hear, we have no cell service. I'm so blessed to have Wi-Fi, but I have no cell service. And when people here leave their homes once a day to go and find resources and to use any type of service, they're checking Facebook. And that's the way that they're finding out about resources, food, drop-offs, water, getting water, um, asking people for help. And I'm not noticing a kind of presence from larger relief organizations. And, you know, the infant and young child feeding and emergencies toolkit um, is very well developed for those relief organizations. But I need resources for these families who are in survival mode and who are doing without and the babies are doing without. 
um, gas, food, water, power. Those are our needs right now. So, um, like I said, I'm just very overwhelmed and I, I did not anticipate such support, but I'm very grateful for it because we need, um, we need plans that are going to get people the things that they need now, not tomorrow, not in two days. We need to do it now. Um, every hour that ticks by at this point, children are going without. So I know that, um, Laura, I don't know if you have service enough to give any kind of an update from your standpoint. Um, and I don't know if there's anybody else on here from that area. Yeah, uh, so we evacuated. I have very little power on my phone. So if it dies, I apologize. We evacuated yesterday morning and um, we just didn't have the resources. And But I've been in touch with a lot of my past clients and um, doula babies and that there is, uh, it's rough. It is really rough there. I did have somebody tell me that they, have been nursing their neighbor's baby as well, along with theirs. So there's some milk sharing happening in that capacity. But the lack of water is really the biggest thing. The, the clean water, like if there's a number one thing, it's they people don't have the water to feed their baby. Yes, service is bad. I'm not um, even sure. Can you Laura, can you, yeah, can you introduce yourself? I'm sorry, I didn't introduce you. Sorry, me. I'm Laura, and I am a breastfeeding consultant uh, in the Asheville area. I live in Asheville, and I work, I've worked private practice for many years, but I um, currently work as well with Aeroflow Health, and we're also talking about coordinating and how we can support in Asheville, because that's where our home base is, um, but everyone, I think, like Brandy is just overwhelmed with the need and the, the the lack of infrastructure to be able to support it well. Um, so I don't really know what the answer is. I know that water is a huge need that we have to fill. I, and I know that there are organizing efforts. If anyone is available and knows how to use um, the, the how to use Reddit. It is all of the people who are organizing support and care on the ground. And I think that that would be an incredible resource to utilize for communication because that's where most people are going to find information. Um, and so if we can get anything organized, that would be the perfect place to put it. It's like the first thing when you go onto the Asheville subreddit. Um, so it's that's kind of where I'm at. I don't have I'm not there physically to be managing things, but I am in contact with a lot of people there. Um, and so just, it is catastrophe level. I mean, people are really in a dangerous place and babies are really not safe right now. I was, I was contacted by a person who was in Greenville, North Carolina. She's an IBCLC and her name is Heather Baseman. And she is, she contacted me because she wants to send donations, right? We're all hearing about, you can donate, you can do this, you can donate. Um, Angie tells me that her son says that they will probably be stopped on the highway. and won't even be allowed to enter the places that they're going. Um, but my idea is like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of private helicopter drop-ins that are happening right now. There's a lot of people who are helping just because they need to get in the air and get these people out or get them dropped what they need. And, you know, I'm, if people are going to insist upon donating things, it, thank you, Heather, you're there. Um, I just want to make sure that we're doing it in the most safe and responsible way and that we're focusing on the guidelines as much as we can. If, if we cannot rely only upon large relief organizations to do their thing in these infant and young child feeding emergency situations and we have to mobilize locally on the ground keeping kits together that are responsible like uh, water bleach um, I know a manual breast pump is not ideal but sometimes it has to happen in these situations um, Anything that we can do to just support the safety of things, even ready to feed formula for families whose assessments show that that is appropriate. Um, but we have so many who are wanting to help 
And I was talking with Kathy earlier today, getting very overwhelmed because we're trained to do this. And yet our needs are showing us that that's not going to be enough to meet the needs immediately. And so she was so encouraging to me to say that, don't worry about doing it the right way. Just do it the most responsible way you can in the, the safest way possible, educating people about how to maintain safety with all of this. And I think there's a lot to be said about that, but I don't know if Heather, you wanted to weigh in on anything. I see Angela Tatum Malloy has her hand up. If it, no, you don't. Is she shaking her head? No. <laughs> I was trying to type. So my um, husband, my um, husband's unit has just been deployed um, with the National Guard, and they're heading there. So what I sent with him because they're going to have usually after in emergencies like this. Um, and my experience is from what we did when we experienced Hurricane Katrina. Um, when you don't have phone service, you're, the word gets through that whenever um, either National Guard and or Salvation Army can make their way to you, they, they do have where you can utilize the phones. I've given him the laminated printouts, the three pages for safe infant feeding plus a laminated printout for the warm line to put by the phone. So that's the first option. Um, and I forget who was just speaking. Um, you are what it is, it is overwhelming right afterwards. Um, it can get chaotic when you have too many people coming in. Um, so what I am plan, planning to do with Maya is, um, you know, collect as many, get donations for new hand pumps, um, paper cups, buckets, bleach, all the things. Um, uh, the water will be there. They're going to be in packet. They're going to be in, you know, cases. Once we can, you know, get and I'm going to see how people are able to, like what the guards plan is getting to people. And if we can identify specific areas, I can relay that um, to my husband because he's, don't ask me his position, but I know he's over his unit. So if I can get locations of where they can because when they get to where they are, they create their plan of where they're going to be deploying in the areas. Um, and what I'm going to do is just take advantage of the um, private planes that are gathering in Concord and just get the um, items to them specifically. Uh, if those that are in the area can identify some landmark areas that we can get the people that are Suppose you know, or in the area, um, emergency responders like the National Guard, if we can have that information, that's helpful as well, especially for infant feeding um, purposes. Um, and then our goal is to, if we can get up whenever there's time, we'll get up there. But, you know, it is true. We want to be mindful of the groups that are already up there. Salvation Army, if you do go and you're from out of town, um, you can go wherever the sites are for Salvation Army, have your credentials, have some kind of photo ID, have your information that if they need to verify. I've done that before where you just show up. And when you do, um, just kind of make an announcement that, you know, you're infant feeding specialist. I don't just say breastfeeding or lactation, infant feeding specialist. And one thing you can ask the Salvation Army is, is there a space that you can have where you can um, allow families that want support instead of doing the support because usually it's in an open room if they were able to make it to a shelter it's in an open room so you don't want to do that um, but they do require some kind of credentialing so I do advise to have that with you if you're able to make it to um, any of the locations but if someone's there can identify those locations um, like are they rec centers you know um, school gym, something that was not damaged, that would be helpful as well. Thank you, Angela. And I, I wanna say out loud, I am having trouble managing the, the chat and all the people coming in. So um, Brianna, if you want, if you have anything that needs to be said out loud, I welcome you to do that. I see Maya's hand up and then there was also a question for Heather. So Maya, then Heather. Hey everyone, um, my name is Maya Jackson. I'm with Mame Inc. in Durham. Um, we dealt with a housing crisis in 2020 in which over 300 people had to be displaced. 
And we did not have any government support at all until it got to the point where it became a bad look for them. And it was a lot of community organizing and supporting residents within their neighborhoods, learning how they moved and how they conducted rules within their community and making sure that we were able to collect uh, baby items so that way they could uh, manage and meet their basic needs over the span of six months. And so I reached out to um, Sisters Caring for Sisters, which is in um, Asheville as well, just to kind of check on their team and see how they were doing and if they needed baby items. And so we do have a storage unit here in Durham in which um, I reached out to Shanika to let her know that we could start collecting items for them. Um, so if there's anyone that would like to donate items here in the Triangle, um, please stop by our office to do so. But I would also like to just reaffirm what Angela was saying. If you guys could find a stationary location that has not um, been damaged and just kind of make that the hub for families in that area, it will really make it easy for people to come in and come out to be able to get those resources as best as they can during that time frame. And I, I understand and hear what you all are saying about uh, not interrupting what the big programs are doing, but the big programs don't know your community like you know your community. And so even though you want to kind of be respectful of those guidelines, like you said, you guys have immediate needs right now and you guys are going to have to lean on to each other as much as possible because they're not going to know how to get around to get these resources. So um, if anyone, you know, just needs some organizing advice, um, please feel free to reach out. Um, all of our work was community members led. We were just there to be in support and to make sure that people got the resources and how they needed to distribute it. It was passed out based on community. Um, so just here to lend an ear and advice on any support that you guys need as well. So my great, great advice. Um, Brandy had a question for Heather. Brandy, you might have to repeat it because I think I lost it too. Um, um well, Heather had Heather has a um, we came up with an Amazon wish list of things that are uh, again appropriate and helping to maintain safety. Um, my my question for the group is well, I have a few questions. In terms of my clinic in downtown Silva, I'm willing to use my clinic as some sort of a hub for either getting donations there and then on to other organizations more in ground zero. Um, or allowing it to also be some sort of a, a pickup station. Um, my, my question is also about ready to feed infant formula that people are going to donate formula anyway. We might as well, you know, kind of encourage them to donate sterile ready to feed if possible. Do you all agree with that from our ethical standpoints? And also in terms of the many, many people who are reaching out to me saying, I have milk, who needs milk? Can you take some of my milk, even though I'm not a registered milk bank donor? Um, can you get it to someone who needs it? Where where are like there's such a gray area, right? Where are we all at in our beliefs about that? And and you know policy to the side, official policies to the side. Like what do we think? What do we believe about that in terms of IBCLCs and our code of ethics and code of conduct? I think when so when actively doing this. Um, you know, we can't put our IBCLC hat to the side. You know, it comes with it. Um, but we also are addressing immediate needs. Um, it depends on where you are in providing that support. I'll give an example of when I was at, um, and I walked like from rec centers to schools, wherever the places were. If I had a place that I could bring someone to the side, I still in a, a very abbreviated manner, you know, quickly educated them about, you know, the things that, pairing all the things. Um, I, on my phone, uh, created a very brief kind of, because we still have to be mindful of consent and all that things. We can't throw all that stuff out the window, but we can do it in a very quick manner. So I created a very abbreviated um, consent, letting them know that I was providing support in a peer um, level, even though I am an IBCLC, anything that's identified as a clinical issue that I would need to get full consent to go further into that um, and just had it on my phone and they could provide their basic information um, for that. Um, so you still can do the things, but you do it in abbreviated um, 
in an abbreviated manner. Uh, if it's someone that is coming to you with low supply, you can still do some basic things. When's the last time you fed a stretch? When is the last time you fed using a bottle or a cup? If they said never, start with where they are in the moment and go with what you can within that time frame. So we don't have to throw everything out. And, you know, but then also we're not gonna have babies hungry as well. So it, it's it's kind of knowing how to navigate in that emergency situation. Make sure everyone is reading up on the document. It's a 17 page document that you can read on um, information. Educate yourself so you'll know the things that you're able to do and then understand when you have to deviate and how to still protect yourself because at the end of the day, we still are, you know, professionals in this and could be liable. Make sure your liability insurance is up to date. If you have current insurance, check all of that. I would keep a copy of that on you just in case any of the larger organizations they want to see that. You can make a copy of it. But again, remember to protect yourself as we're out to protect your families. Okay. Hopefully that answered it as much as I could. Uh, is it Marcella? Marcel? I see a hand up. I'm saying your name wrong. If you have your hand raised, come off mute and share. Oh, hand down. Okay. Um, um, uh, I want to say something really quick, love, if that's okay. okay. Um, Taco, my son, he's in emergency management and through the state, um, he's local in Lee County and he's headed out this past, this coming next weekend. I know Angela um, had mentioned something about National Guard. We're so grateful to that. Um, but they had already mentioned on the North Carolina Emergency Management um, Facebook page. If you don't have that, please get on get on that and see their updates about how they're doing things and how they would like donations. Right now, from what I understand, like Angela said, most of it is um, flying in. The problem I'm seeing with some of the groups in my local community at home in Chatham County, as well um, here locally at work, um, people are, are going on private planes. The problem that I'm seeing is I'm seeing a lot of formula being sent, powder formula, and I've been mentioning on the threads that may want to take some water. The idea is they're not asking for water because of the weight of it. It's been a problem with getting it on the plane and distributing it on the smaller helicopters. So that's a problem. So I do know there's two trucks headed out um, right now with a whole truckload of it. But the problem is the concern we've been seeing is they need to get with these partnered um, distribution centers that's already been set up. Because if you're just willy-nilly riding in somewhere with a truck, the highway patrol is turning people around. I, I really hate that, but they are being, being bombarded. And every site that I've seen today that I've got linked to has been, please don't come just to look. Please don't come just to ride up and see us. Don't come with that idea of being able to drop off clothes and think there's nowhere to do these things. It is catastrophic. And what has happened is there's been sightseeing people coming and people are being looting already. Um, and problems have been happening with that. So they're saying, please stay out of the area so that the rescue workers, the recovery people, um, any kind of management, utility trucks, I mean, those few roads that's in that area is being used for those purposes. And there are lots of places, we talk about Asheville a lot, but there's lots of places we have to keep in mind that's above Asheville, outside of Asheville, that is deep, deep, deep in the mountains of North Carolina that maybe nobody knows of, that people are stranded still waiting for somebody to save them. So we need to think about figuring out how we can best do what we need to do. And I, I'm so glad and so, so amazed that we have such a great lactation nation that we can kind of get together and figure these things out because I want to give the best information to, to everybody that's asking me because I'm being asked quite a bit today. And I know that um, we want to be helpful. So the toolkits that are coming in on the message page and and everything is great because we want to make sure that we give the emergency management needs this information too, but how can we give it to them so that they can give the appropriate information with um, water and mixing and these things and making sure to tell moms that are still breastfeeding to continue to breastfeed and things that in that nature. So I was hoping that, is there anybody on the, the, the thread or the conversation that's from anywhere outside of the Asheville area up deeper in, um, in a, or if anybody knows of anybody. So, I mean, I know 
I, I went to school in the mountains. My mom, my sister, they're up there. Um, I know Sugar Mountain is blocked and both all the ways out are blocked. Um, I, but that's all I know. I know power is spotty, cell phone service is spotty. We're not getting up-to-date information. But also, uh, it there's so many people that have been lost, but also like my mom, she, she sent one text message out. She said, I can't text, I'm fine. There's trees down. I have no power, but also if you're in the mountains, oftentimes there are emergency kits um, to be prepared for no power if your house did not wash away. <laughs> and I have to be real about that. And I want to go back to Brandy's question. I'm going to say out loud, I'm going to speak as love. I always go into these spaces as a mom first. And I think that if you were opening your facility out to serving the community, you would be under the food pantry guidelines, which um, not simply serving as an IBCLC, which means you could distribute ready to, I, again, I rec recommend the ready to use formula um, under the food pantry guidelines as you're serving as an IBCLC, which means you can obviously and always distribute infant nutrition as appropriate, that's life-saving life-sustaining, that's going to be your priority. So if you're dealing with parents who have shared informed consent and they do not want to breastfeed, that's not their choice. You would of course support them with appropriate infant nutrition. You're an infant nutrition specialist, you know what they need, and you're not violating any of your ex ethics to make sure that infants are re receiving appropriate nutrition. Um, that is in compliance with the world health guidelines. That's what I would say. That's my interpretation of the guidelines. Um, and I'll speak, speak again for love. Let's not let our ethics make us crazy to the point where babies aren't getting their food. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, right. I mean, that's just, thank you so much for saying that out loud. I love, love, I love how you are always willing to say it out loud because, you know, us trying to maintain levels of responsibility with liability and clinical ethics, it, it gets muddy in situations like this. And so having folks like Angela and you being able to weigh in and, and normalize the thoughts that are all, that are going through all of our heads, right? Like Mara, you're, you're living it out there too, mama. Yeah. Um, I, I, somebody asked me if I, if they had a way to get to Silva from Asheville. Yes, you can come through Waynesville right now. It is open. Anybody else have thoughts that they would like to share? I want to open the floor to other expertise. I just wanted to mention that if you're looking for gas and you guys are going to come up and you're going to come up 26, Spartanburg, Gaffney, Landrum, all your exits 26 up to the gorge and up into Arden and Asheville and Hendersonville, you can, you're going to be in long lines for gas. We could find, find it right off the interstate um, because that's where we're at. If we had enough gas, I'd, I'd be up there to you. Um, that's what we're actually waiting for right now is gas. Um, but you cannot find a lot of it there. And if you can, it is only cash. So make sure that you can get cash a lot. So if we're sending stuff up to you guys, we can find a hub. And I'm more than happy to use my basement as a hub. I've got a dry storage that we can do. Like I said, I still don't have power. And likely Duke said maybe Friday night at midnight. Um, but I am more than happy to keep it all as an area that we can get it and get it ready. And I'm about 30 minutes from Flat Rock 25, actually, not even, um, and 40 minutes to the airport, if that. Um, so I'm more than happy to do those things, but just things that we have to keep considerations of, of gas wise, Charlotte is your last time until you start getting past that. And Gaffney gets a little scarce, Spartanburg and everything up past here. We're having hard times. We're just starting to get trouble. <clears throat> Did I lose y'all? A little bit. Um, do you have a place? Uh, da Brandy has offered her location as a drop off point. Do you know of any other drop off that. that would be appropriate I'm in sorry? the part of the state? Yeah. Like I said, I'm more than happy. I'm mountain lactation. I have a, a home office I can have people come to. We've got. Um, 
a, a generator hookup right now. So I do have uh, lights if we need and things of that nature. I can heat up stuff. I've got some supplies on hand, but I'm more than happy to use the basement as um, like a, a location, a drop off location for anybody if they need. Can, can you put the address of Mountain Location, uh, yeah. Mountain location <laughs> Got you. Information in the chat? And Brandy, yes. will you put your contact information and address in yeah. so that maybe that can be shared with people like Angela, it, uh, and Maya and Durham to send supplies? Marcel's in Candler, which is between Waynesville and Asheville. Um, Marcel, if you want to put your the 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 contact, you know, well, so, oh, never mind. I see your contact number. Um, yeah. And then, Anna, yeah, like I am so glad that you shared that because that does, does show that like these are extenuating circumstances. And um, I did invite Carrie Gottschall to this meeting, who's the director of the Wake Med Mother's Milk Bank, but I don't think she was able to be on. She was in complete support of me using our freezer, which was empty at the time, to to house people's milk if they were going to end up losing it. Um, and so I can just reloop back around with her and just let her know, like, there may be times where we're we're taking in milk for people, you know, and and maybe giving it <laughs> giving it out a little bit. Um, I see Kathleen has her hand up. Hey. Um... I'm an IBCLC up in Newport News, Virginia, um, and uh, a lot of folks um, were sort of talking to me about wondering what we could do, and so I'm, I am started like a, a fundraising thing to be able to collect manual pumps, um, you know, like maybe bulk order them and send them somewhere. Is there like a, should we try to send them all to one place or multiple different locations um or maybe there can be a document of places to send supplies yeah, so oh, go ahead oh, yeah i was gonna okay so i know we have brandy you're in the lo the area correct so uh, or um i'm in i live in bryson city and my office is in silva it's about 45 minutes from Asheville. um have we made contact with anyone directly Aside from my, I, and, and I know we have kind of, have we made any contact in any kind of way? Um, because typically this is what happens when you're in, who? Janie. Janie. She's an okay. IBCLC and we were available, but she has very spotty server. Okay. So this is what happens when you're in the midst of this situation. The first thing, whether you still have a standing home or not, you're trying to find Salvation Army um, and the and the National Guard because Salvation Army is going to be feeding you. The National Guard is bringing in water and other supplies, diapers, and everything. And they're also there. My husband told me they're there for that and also mission rescue. So they're they're doing both. So that's going to be typically the two um, areas that people when when you're looking that that's who you're looking for. And Salvation Army is trying to look for them as well. So. The key is us connecting with someone, and I'm going to be trying to do that once we get off, with Salvation Army that is in that area, because that's going to be the fastest way of knowing how they want, because here's, here's what happens. If you start sending things directly there, and they don't have a plan to store this, because remember, you know, everyone's with limited or no storage areas in that vicinity, then you're creating even more challenges for them. So um, do we, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to remember how we would con communicate because you're right, the phones like, you know, cell towers, you're not able to communicate with anyone. The you best thing- Wi-Fi, um, you know, and the, the Wi-Fi- I mean the folks that are like, right, that, like I'm thinking of the families that are, there is gonna be, remember there's phone at the Salvation Army locations and the National Guard will have a phone that they allow people to use. Right now, we have to assume that they don't have access because what happens, even when you do have internet, you're trying or or phone, and you have a little bit of that, you're you're being very particular about going on social media and everything. My father-in-law was like micromanaging our phone time because we had very limited and didn't have a way to charge it. So. Um, that's my, and I'm answering the person that was saying like, you know, how do we get things? 
I think right now we haven't identified, and I know we said the, the planes have a limited, uh, um, what they can take because of weight, breast pump, the hand pumps they can take. Um, if someone has like an S1 that's battery operated, please remember if you have that, provide the batteries as well. Um, provide as many as you can send with it. Um, so any supplies that are light, those planes, let them, because they've identified where they drop things off and they're going to identify where Salvation Army is. Because usually in these situations, FEMA, Salvation Army, and National Guard take over mobilizing and kind of interacting with whatever whatever other groups are coming in. So Angela, when a person asks for out of state where they can send stuff, can they send, I know you work closely with Ma, Maya and Mame. Should everybody be mailing things to Mame and then it will get there? Or so Maya, you answer that and then I'm going to be, because luckily I have a vehicle that once I get to Charlotte in my, in my car, I can drive from, I can, I have about 700, 800 miles that I can, you know, get through. So um, remembering if anyone is going to drive, be mindful of what vehicle, the person that's volunteering. Yes, it's wonderful to have an SUV, but remember going up mountains, that SUV is going to pull more. Um, so just be, someone said, once you get to that last spot in Charlotte, even though you're probably able to gas up, you're going to utilize more gas as you're going um, at higher elevations. So just keep that in mind as you're choosing to drive up. And I was going to say, um, we just heard from SC4S today um, and key things that they had mentioned they needed, of course, was diapers and wipes and additional resources. But we're waiting for them to tell us like once they do their assessment of community, because they had to locate all of their service providers. Once we hear from them, we'll decide what that looks like in regards to us going up, but we're not moving until they tell us to move. So right now our strategy is just to try to collect and stockpile what we can here in our closet while we have space. And then once we get the next steps for them to kind of move forward is when we will make the decision um, of driving up to, to distribute uh, the resources to them directly. And maybe, you know, those of you who are there and able to do this, maybe on that Google Doc that was just shared, at some point there can be kind of like a, if you're out of state, send things to ABC locations. Yeah. You know, that might be the most helpful. I'd say... Maya, if you're okay, it can be you. Um, Maya and I are in the same city and breast, I work with Breastfeed Durham with funding. And I'm like, Maya, if we need to buy a storage unit to hold extra things, Breastfeed Durham can pay for a storage unit for a month to hold yeah. over. That's um, fine. So, Kathy, uh, you had a question about the Salvation Army and how is the address in Greenville getting the Amazon wish list to you? Uh, Heather's husband is supposed to be driving up with that order. Um, and it says in the post they're coordinating with larger lactation organizations in the U.S. So when I had posted that, I was specifically thinking about Carolina um, with Lactation Hub, who was willing to donate some supplies. But really, that if you guys were to look at that wish list, it's very specific things like, um, you know, it's got bleach. It's got open top cups. It's it's. We're trying to be very safe and responsible about this, and um and so I, I feel like this has been helpful for us. I hope that answers that question, Kathy. Um, yeah, and I mean, um, I'm so glad that you've heard from Sisters Can for Sisters. I, I I don't. I'm surprised that you've been able to even get in contact with anybody. And I think Alicia has a hand raised. She does. I've seen that. Alicia, can you come off mute? I'm sorry it took us so long to get to you. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that took me a minute to figure out how to unmute it. Um, I just wanted to um, say I have um, a colleague. She, Her and I were in the Marine Corps together. She is, her and her husband are both prior Marines. They're used to doing like emergency operations, logistics operations and that type of stuff. She's also an IBCLC and a, a registered dietitian. Um, but she is up in Fletcher. So I, I, she said that's about 35 minutes, I think she said, away from Asheville area and has family that's specifically in Asheville. Um, I don't know if that's um, any closer for you guys, if you guys are trying to reach somebody. I did just reach out to her um, and kind of ask her what her situation is. Do they have power? Does she feel like she's 
currently poised to help with any kind of like distribution or coordination activities or anything like that. Um, but um, her name's Angela Gayachetta. If anybody um, wants me to get them in contact with her, um, I'd be happy to put you guys in touch. Um, and then also, I think I had told um, Heather, and I don't. I think Brandy might have saw seen it as well. Um, I'm happy to do a hub down here. I'm about um, an hour and a half away from Heather in Jacksonville, North Carolina, outside the Marine Corps base down here. Um, and Fletcher has body power, if any. I, I yeah, I'm not sure how she's. Um, she's been posting things on Facebook, I know, and she's contacted me like immediately after I messaged her. So I don't know if. Maybe they have a generator at their house. I wouldn't be surprised. They're probably preppers, but um, um, yeah. But I was gonna say I'd be happy to uh, be a hub down here at my office as well. I just dropped off a bunch of feeding gear supplies at our local fire department. That's um, taking some trailers up um, at the end of this week, I believe. Um, and then I was also like, I know I um have like honey bears in bulk. Do we feel like that would be a good feeding option or not because of the straws? I know my honey bears when I order them. Um, they come with little scrub brushes to clean the straw with, but I figured that's a pretty cheap option as well. When I order them in bulk, I get them at like $1.50 per honey bear. And then do we have a list too that we can send out to people? That's like, um, you can do like a Google map where you drop dots and pins um, where we can show people, hey, this is where all the infant feeding drop-off locations are. And then they go to like the next bigger hub, I think, which would be Brandy, I think. Okay. That was it. I think the short answer is no, we don't have any of those things set up yet. I think those are good suggestions. Um, I don't know the answer about the honey bears. Does anyone know the answer? Go, come off mute if you know the answer. Hey, this is Lillian. Those honey bears are really hard to clean. So I would prefer them to cup feed, honestly, just in safety. Um, harder to clean than bottles just with the straw and safety first. So that'd be my thing. The other thing I want to speak to is our G2 feeding folks. Um, and one of those groups that I'm in, um, some of them are on the infinity pumps and do not know how to garbage feed. And they also really need sterile supplies. So I have some folks also willing to our G2 families wanting to donate supplies to Western North Carolina to help those families. Um, so I'm hoping we can organize some stuff uh, to include them as well obviously a much smaller population and the picture of all of our infants, but let's definitely work to support them too. So the best thing, like if you go to Sam's, those little small, like getting the, the bulk size of the small cups um, and making sure, now we have to remember not to just give this to anyone. They need to, we need to be able to um, educate on safe cup feeding, you know, um, uh, so again, we want to be mindful and this is Brandy. So this is what you're talking about. It's like, you, you want to be mindful, but you want to act, but we still have to like act instantly, but keep the baby safe as well, because we don't want just any and everyone going and saying here, we're going to start cup feeding and, you know, don't know how to do it safely. Um, you know, if, if people don't know how to, clean things safely. Uh, so it, it, it's one of those things, you know, you, you want to go with your gut, but we don't want to add additional harm. Um, again, getting with those organizations, that's going to be the best. I'm telling you, in these situations, because they're trying to manage chaos, I'm pretty sure eventually there's going to be, keep in mind, if they haven't already, there's going to eventually, someone mentioned possible looting, you know, let's all, so I want to speak to the looting thing. Because it was really challenging during Katrina, um, let's be mindful of the resource, the sources that we get about looting, please. Please, that was one thing that was so frustrating when we were down there and listening and describing areas and we're sitting in the areas like, that's not going on. So let's just please be mindful of that piece of it um, and making sure that we are, you know, just not adding chaos to an already chaotic situation. Even with our hearts, you know, yes, we're focusing on the babies. We're probably, and I say we collectively, um, the larger organizations, like I said, they're not trained or even, you know, focusing on babies. 
their thoughts. Someone mentioned about, you know, infant formula. That's the, that's usually the extent in emergencies that doesn't have um, young child feeding training. They think them thinking of um, babies is formula, not even considering, like I said, the water, safe prep, anything. And what I mean, safe preparation, you know, having the bottled water, um, making sure that the, I, when I was in one of the locations, the cases of formula was on one side of the um, open space. And you're already, these people are in places where it's uncomfortable, you're with strangers, and the water was way on the other side. So now you're, ha so just being little things, I, I went in and helped with, hey, can we have water pallets next to this? And hey, can we have this um, uh, paper on here for someone that's coming to reach that if they want lactation support, that there is someone that they can call, or if you have access to a warm, them to use a warm line, give them access. So just simple things like that can be helpful also. Thank you, Angela. I was gonna uh, talk about the looting. Um, just to clarify this, I'm sorry, I didn't mention that. I understand what you're saying, Angela, but I did wanna mention that that was one reason why that some of the local um, places that um, has been posting that are legit, I do follow them, that they're not doing that to, you know, cause conflict or more um, frustration or hyper, you know, situations. They just want to make it, they what they brought that forward because they wanted to say, please, if there is not a need for you to be in the community, not to be in the community, because it's very, very overwhelming right now is how they, they stated it. Um, and on second that, I just texted my son and I did post a direct um, link to emergency management. He just responded and said that if anybody wants to, now this is coming from emergency management, um, if anybody wants to get involved, if anybody wants to do this, if you want to make uh, arrangements to get into the area, you have to email them directly and speak to them. And I did post that link. So you can go to that link. Um, I put it in the chat. Um, and that way you can try to make arrangements as a group or any like as like lactation. If we wanted to send a group or a team or anything like that, and Angela and Mike can help too on the um the National Guard side of Angie, it. Angie, where's that link again? Um let me just redo it again. Let me post yeah, it. Yeah, please, if you don't mind. Thanks. Um I just put it Thanks, there. Angie. Can I let well, Kathleen she has her hand up. Um, I was thinking in terms of also like with the concerns about parents not knowing to cup feed safely, um, you know, all those disposable bottle nipples, I don't work in a hospital, but those disposable bottle nipples and all those things that are intended for single use, is there a place to bulk order those from like outside the hospital? Because maybe that could be included, you know, those are intended to be disposable. It's such an interesting thought. I, my instinct is to push towards the wish list that those who are in Western North Carolina have already put together. Mm -hmm. um, that That's what I'm thinking. I do want to shift the conversation. We have 13 minutes left and I, then I know people will have to hop up. The call I've gotten is concerns about people who are lactation support providers and birth workers who have had to evacuate the area um, oftentimes, particularly our marginalized communities and some folks are really struggling financially on the edge already. And now during this em emergency are even more struggling and are staying in hotels, not having housing. And I was hearing that and I'm just going to speak my heart. I was thinking like, can I put out a bed on the floor? I know some people we're in Durham for those of you who are outside of North Carolina, which is about three and a half hours away from Asheville. And I was thinking we love each other. Can we, can anybody want to, I was just, I don't know the answer to this, but I was thinking if we have birth or lactation workers who are evacuating and are in a situation where they're in long-term hotel situations that is not financially comfortable for them, that we might be able to partner with some other folks and get people together um, to be able to stay in each other's homes. And I know myself, I'm struggling because I'm like, I only have so many beds and my family's leaving. So we're trying to figure all of those pieces out. But I think in terms of lactation and birth folks, North Carolina Breastfeeding Coalition could coordinate that. So if you have a spare room that you'd be willing to use, if you need a spare room to use and you are a lactation support provider or birth worker in our community, we might match you all together if you do need to evacuate. 
And I was also asked about putting together if the North Carolina Breastfeeding Coalition would be willing to put together a fund to support, I, I don't want to name names, but we've gotten calls, blah, 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 has just left. She's in a hotel. Do you know how many kids she has? How long are they going to be able to afford to do this? Um, are you guys doing anything? How And Brandy, even you, like you're talking about helping others. But I'm like, how are you doing? Are you okay? Uh, are you surviving? You have little kids. I want to take our, now 10 minutes and talk about how we as perf as humans are doing in this moment and are you taking care of yourself enough so that you can serve and support the community yeah i think you know i'm very very fortunate to to be kind of as ill impacted as i am i'm really just don't have cell service um but I think, you know, like all of us are taking an emotional toll with this when we simply hear about what's going on and worry. Um, I don't really have answers except the fact that like we just kind of have to take care of ourselves moment by moment and not sit in those feelings too long before taking a break and just trying to come back to it later if you need to. But um, I'm also trying to make myself available to be contacted and to try to check social media for people who are sending people in need our way. Um, I, I think in terms of the Google Doc, if anybody would be willing to work on quick one-page handouts for those of us who are encountering one-on-one encountering -on -one families who are seeking individual support from us that we maybe could use um, for cup feeding, you know, cleaning, education, safety, you know, quick little one page handouts if they don't already exist before I go searching for them. I, I feel like that would be helpful, but I feel like the, the only way uh, past it is through it. And we just have to be also patient because it, it feels like it's been weeks of this now and it's only been a few days. Um, and every day that I, every day that goes by, I'm like, well, how much longer can this possibly last? And and we are looking at months and months and months of this, most likely to some degree. Um, so I, I'm just so thankful that I'm not having to think about all this alone, because especially with like not even being able to contact most people who I would normally loop in for this, like the La Asheville Lactation Consultants, like we, we can't really even coordinate right now. So me and Mara have been able to coordinate, um, obviously me and Heather, but and I'm sorry, I'm talking so much. My brain has just been absolutely exhausted with this. And this is a rare opportunity for some um, constructive feedback. Any, any other thoughts that anyone wants to share? Okay. Um, I'm going to put to the vote that we put together a, um, a some sort of a care fund for those of you who are, are out there, I am worried about everybody evacuating. And I mean, it won't be enough, but maybe like, I don't know, grocery gift card, something. I don't know. I, I'm going to, we're going to think about it. I'm going to think about it. I'm going to hold it. Um, anybody else need to come off mute? We've got five minutes. Okay. So Hi. go ahead. Um, I just quickly want to share, um, this seems like a small thing to do. Um, but it's a small piece that'll connect um, large level. There is in your local public health department, there's an emergency preparedness coordinator. Um, I just want to urge everyone to reach out to them um, or us because <laughs> we're on daily calls, briefings, we're getting updates. Um, so take the time to just make sure that your local preparedness coordinator knows um, if you're willing that you're there as a resource. And when we're on these state briefings every day, um, they are going to be able to, you know, know that it's available, utilize. I'm going to push on our call tomorrow because they're already emailing us every day. And I'm deploying like two staff tomorrow, um, environmental health specialists, nurses, that sort of thing, that we add to that spreadsheet, um, lactation consultants. Um, so the state wants to know who's available to help. They're asking, reaching out every day. Um, so a, a good kind of like local, no matter where you are across the state, person to reach out to is that emergency preparedness coordinator. 
Thank you. And love, and love can, when with the fun, if you may consider um, that fun covering those um, that will be, I don't know why the camera's not on me, but those that will be helping, because remember, FEMA has funds for families, but they don't have funds, and they're not going to feed us when we're up in that area. They're only going to feed um, those that reside. So if that could be considered, um, that would be helpful as well. That's a great suggestion. Like pay for some gas to get some people up there. Or, you know, getting some food or, yeah, if there's an emergency, like someone, for example, um, card not work, anything that they have a place to reach out for, you know, if they need to get back or whatever. But that would be helpful because I know one thing that they ask is volunteers, if you're not with a group that's already covering feeding you, if you're coming up, you have to be responsible for that for yourself. Okay. All right. Uh Dana, I just have one other quick question. Um, I really appreciate you being a representative for us on those calls in terms of what you're hearing or us express here. I think that's a thing that we are all thinking of as lactation consultants is who are the IBCLCs, the specialists on the ground in these shelter situations, working with these organizations, because even though we're trained in infant and young child feeding and emergencies and we train others, we, I mean, I train emergency preparedness coordinators for this through MAHEC. And I don't really feel necessarily that there's a huge um, presence of like IBCL specific representation within that realm. So if you could maybe pass that message on along and, and yes, like I would get in the car right now and head somewhere if they told me I was needed, I, I would totally do that. So we are willing and ready and, and wanting to help. Awesome. I'll, I'll certainly be sharing that um, starting tomorrow, like I said, because they're already surveying, asking who's available in your community. And I ask tomorrow, well, we need to get lactation consultants added to this so we can start collecting that information because there are people who are ready and willing um, and able to go. And just to echo, um, what Angela said, I want to support. That was also said actually today um, in one of the emergency briefings is that like people who are not connected to a group, they need to be self-supported if they're trying to go. Um, so if, even if you are able to actually get through, because they are turning people around on the roads um, who haven't connected with North Carolina Emergency Management. And I did put that email in the chat a little earlier. Um, I can make sure it gets in the Google Doc. Um, but they are turning people around because some of the roads are open, but only for emergency um, vehicles and deliveries cleared through emergency management. Jen, I want to say thank you, too, because my son's in emergency management, management and I'm just getting just things from him to do. And he's like, Mom, tell people, please don't just go and drive because that's a long ways to drive and not be able to get where you need to be and participate the way that we want to participate. We want to make sure we have a good plan when we do it all, just like Angela said as well. I did want to tell you that I did see some great information coming out about on horseback because of a lot of the rural um, areas in North Carolina mountains. There has been a couple of teams going out with horseback. Um, a lot of first responders that can ride horses, they're doing that. Um, there's also hikers. We have a great North Carolina community, and I just it just makes me, ooh, it gives me just tears because we have been so fortunate in North Carolina to have the help that we do, but it's getting to where we need to get to be to get that um, help that we need to get out there, like Brandy had said, and um, just know there's more and more coming out, but I try to go down the rabbit hole to make sure these are legitimate places that I'm looking at too before I share them. That's so important because there's so many bad things out there. We all know that there are some bad things out there that are trying to, you know, not so much do the right thing. So we want to be careful what we share too and, and be careful to give the right information on social media, which I'm trying to do myself um, and help right where you're at too, if you can, you know, because sometimes that can be more helpful than we even realize. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us. Uh, we're coming to the end of our official time together. I want everybody to just take a really deep breath into their belly and blow it out. I know that we are, we're going to let the peace and the capability and the feeling that we do have the tools to be able to handle and manage the situation 
that I feel a lot of love and joy with the number of us who all came together to support each other. And that, as Brandy said, only days have passed and we're going to be calm. And I'm just going to take another deep breath into my belly and I'm going to blow out fears and anxiety and I'm going to breathe in joy and hope. And I want to thank you all for joining us. I'm going to stop recording and I'm going to invite if anybody else would just like to stay, I'm going to keep this open for a little while.